Hello and welcome to Laboratory 3, Histology of Cartilage, and this is for Tissue Engineering Fundamentals. So histology, what is it and why is it important? Histology is the study of the microscopic anatomy of cells and tissues of plants and animals. And why is studying this important? Well, for starters, physicians and medical educators cannot become adequately educated in medicine without histology to give them a perspective on what tissues are like at a microscopic level. Many aspects of physiology, for instance inflammation, cannot be fully understood without understanding the structure and components of tissues at a cellular level. And even certain diagnostic procedures in medicine depend critically on the microscopic observations of tissues. Furthermore, Tissue engineering is about regenerating the natural composition and structure of tissue. In order to do so, we have to understand what is there, and we use histology to do so. It is also very important to understand that the preparation of histological samples involves the processing and cutting of very thin slices or sections of tissue usually between 7 to 10 microns thick. This step is necessary to produce pieces of samples in which the detail of the microstructure of the cells and tissues can be clearly observed with a light microscope. In other words, light has to shine through the sample in order to observe the detail of the tissue. So now we're going to discuss the major steps in making a sample for histology. Now the standard preparation process for histological species is the paraffin process and that's what we'll be doing in this lab. Paraffin, in case you didn't know, is a wax. It looks just like candle wax. And the paraffin process has four steps. The first is fixation that preserves the tissue. Next you have processing that involves the dehydration of the tissue and also clears away the tissue and infiltrates it with paraffin wax. And then there's the embedding step where you embed the sample in a, a wax block that is then sectioned or sliced. And the actual sectioning takes place using a piece of equipment called a microtome. So in this lab you'll receive a piece of tissue, specifically you'll receive a piece of porcine ear cartilage and you'll perform a histological analysis on it. Like I said, the first step is fixation. In this step, you're going to immerse your piece of cartilage, it will look like a piece of tofu, in a 3.7% solution of formalin buffer. Formalin is by far the most common fixative and it works by forming crosslinks between the proteins in the tissue. This anchors soluble molecules in the cartilage and also lends additional rigidity to the tissue. And once the tissue is fixed, you can consider it preserved. It's appropriate for long-time storage. Fixing is important because poorly fixed specimens are almost always more difficult to section than those that are not fixed. Also, poorly fixed tissue will produce inferior morphology under the microscope, even if the rest of your technique is perfect. After fixation comes the processing. Processing starts with dehydrating your tissue, but it is important to remember that you have to dehydrate the tissue slowly to maintain the morphology of the tissue structure. So to start, you immerse your tissue in a, a solution of 30% ethanol. This causes the water in the tissue to start to diffuse into the ethanol water mixture due to a concentration gradient. And then you'll immerse the tissue in 50% ethanol, so a little bit more water will come out of it. And then you'll do 70%, 80%, 95 and finally 100% ethanol. And now that your tissue is completely dehydrated, there's room for solvent to infiltrate into it. So in the next step, the tissue is immersed in a histological reagent called Histoclear. 
Histoclear, interestingly, is actually distilled from oranges. Um, and it's completely non-toxic. And it's chosen because it's also completely miscible with paraffin wax. So you have your sample, you immerse it completely in some histoclear. The histoclear will fill the spaces in the tissue left behind by the water. And then you'll immerse the tissue in molten paraffin. So what happens here is that the wax, the molten paraffin, will flow into the tissue and penetrate the areas containing histoclear because paraffin and histoclear are miscible. And once your sample is infiltrated with paraffin, the next step is to embed it. And embedding sounds, it is exactly what it sounds like. You embed the piece of tissue in a block of paraffin wax. So in this picture, you could see a block of paraffin wax and uh, the piece of tissue is actually uh, embedded in there. You can see it highlighted by this uh, red circle. Now what you're doing in the next step is the actual embedding. So you're placing the tissue inside of molten paraffin and then forming a paraffin block around it. Now what you need in order to perform this step is first a disposable uh, clear plastic cassette shown in the circle here and you also need your plastic embedding ring which is shown here in orange. What you'll do is you'll place your clear uh, disposable cassette on the lab bench and you will uh, grab a disposable embedding ring from the box and you'll take the plastic top off, just rip that off and place it aside. And then you'll grab your molten paraffin and pour some into the bottom of the disposable cassette. At this point, that's when you put your sample in the paraffin and continue to pour some paraffin over top of it. Then take your disposable uh, embedding ring and place it on top, just like shown, and continue to fill the top of that ring with the paraffin. And as you can see, if you would like to let it overflow a little bit onto the lab bench, that is actually a good idea to make sure that you have plenty of paraffin in there to hold your tissue sample. Um, and once the paraffin cools, it's fairly easy to just pop it off of the counter in one piece. And after you've finished pouring your paraffin, um, you can let it cool on the countertop for about 30 minutes and then you want to properly label your specimen uh, with your group name and date and then just place it in the refrigerator until the next step. And once your block is finished, it's ready, you're ready to start sectioning, but it is very important to remember, do not become distracted when using the microtone. There is a major risk of injury from the extremely sharp blade located in the cutting area indicated by the yellow circle. Do not put your fingers near that area. But don't worry, you will be assisted when you use the microtome for the first time. Now when you do use the microtome, it's this piece of equipment shown in the picture, the first step will be to adjust the thickness of the sections. You'll set it to 10 microns using this knob on the top right. The second step is then to adjust the position of the block face so it is just right at the knife's edge. And you do that using a handle which is on the left side of the microtome that you can't see in this picture. But when you have it in the right position, then smooth, quick downstrokes of the handle on the right here will produce a ribbon of paraffin wax containing thin sections of tissue. The, the ribbon is then cut using a wooden tool and placed on a microscope slide. Okay, do not use your fingers in the area of the blade. And then you'll transfer the ribbon to a water bath, which it's, it's a warm water bath and it contains gelatin, which helps the paraffin wax adhere to the microscope slide. And then you'll carry the microscope slide over to a slide warmer. The slide warmer is kept at 65 degrees Celsius. Keep it there for 30 minutes. And then you'll turn off the, the slide warmer and you can just leave your slides at room temperature until they're ready for staining. 
Now I've given you some background on the major steps involved in paraffin embedding. And here I'm going to give you a few more details to follow. These are steps that you'll be doing for homework. So these are done outside of class on your own schedule. And the fixation is going to start, like I said before, with 3.7% formalin. So your cartilage will be immersed in this for a duration of 20 minutes. After that step, you'll dehydrate the tissue in graded ethanol solutions 30, 50, 70, 80, 95, and twice in 100% ethanol. Each of these dehydration steps should last a minimum of three hours. By minimum, I mean that um, you, can, you can leave them for longer. I know that your schedule may not allow you to come to the lab every three hours. You can actually leave your cartilage in each of these process solutions for as long as you need to. But they have to ha be a minimum of three hours. After all the dehydration steps are completed, you'll immerse the piece of tissue in histoclear. And the duration of this step is three times two hours. So what I mean by that, you'll use three different histoclear solutions. You'll change the solutions three times. And each of those times, the cartilage will be immersed in the histoclear for a minimum of two hours. Afterwards, the tissue will be infiltrated with liquid paraffin. And you do this by immersing the tissue in paraffin and holding it at 64 degrees Celsius in an oven. Um, which melts the paraffin, and the duration of this step is four times one hour. And then you'll cast the block, like you saw in the video tutorial, and then you'll chill at four degrees Celsius, at least overnight, until you're ready for sectioning. So after your block is made, you'll be ready for sectioning with the microtome. This step will take place during designated time blocks with each group, because we only have one microtome, and I don't want any accidents with the sharp blade. So you'll be supervised the whole time you're using it. And each group will aim to generate about 15 slides with the ribbons about the same length that you see in this picture. And if you look very carefully in this picture, you can also see small pieces of tissue embedded in the wax. So that's what you're going for. Now before talking about the next steps, uh, which are the removal of paraffin and the staining, I want to introduce you to a Copland jar. A Copland jar has grooves in it so that this, the microscope slides can stand on their end, and so you can uh, process many of them at one time. Each Copland jar accommodates five slides, so you'll need about three Copland jars, and each holds about 40 milliliters of liquid. Now before continuing with the staining, you have to first remove the paraffin from the microscope slide. And you'll do this by immersing the microscope slides in the Coplin jars in Histoclear. And Histoclear, of course, will dissolve the paraffin wax away. You'll do this twice for 20 minutes. And then you will rehydrate your tissue by immersing them in graded ethanol, ethanol solutions, starting with 100% ethanol and then 96% ethanol for 15 minutes each, then 70% and 50% for 10 minutes each, and finally immerse the slides in DI, in DI water for 10 minutes. And all this, again, is done in the Coplin jars. Now, groups who receive even numbers are going to do Alcyon blue staining. The way you do that is you follow this procedure. Again, all of the steps occur at room temperature unless otherwise stated. You'll start by, in a Coplin jar, immersing the microscope slides in 3% acetic acid for three minutes. Then you will remove the slides from the Coplin jar and place them down on a flat surface and apply the Alcyon blue stain over top of the microscope slide. You don't do this step in a Coplin jar because it just saves a tremendous volume of expensive stain. So your microscope slides will stay on this flat surface with the stain on top of them for 30 minutes. And when that incubation period is done, you'll rinse the slides in running tap water. You can do that in a Coplin jar for two minutes. Then do two changes of distilled water in the Coplin jar. And then you'll have to dehydrate your tissues. So you'll subject them in a Coplin jar to graded alcohol solutions starting from 50 and then going up to all the way to 100% ethanol. And each of those steps is only about five minutes. 
Finally, you mount your specimens in a synthetic resin called permount. Now, mounting your specimens is important to preserve and support the stained sections during light microscopy. So you do so by pipetting the synthetic resin called permount onto the bottom of the slide. And then you'll take a thin glass cover slip and carefully place it over top. The pressure of the cover slip will cause the permount solution to spread over your samples and just try not to get any bubbles in there because that will cause an optical distortion uh, during the microscopy. Now the odd number groups will be doing hematoxylin and eosin staining, also called H and E staining. For this, you will be given the stains, the hematoxylin and the eosin, and also Scott's solution, which is a buffer that helps staining occur more rapidly. So do the following steps. You'll start with staining with the hematoxylin for five minutes on a flat surface, just like I showed you in the Alcyon Blue protocol. You'll use a pipette to transfer the stain onto the surface of the microscope slides. So that lasts five minutes and then the rest of the steps can be done in the Copland jars. So in the Copland jars you'll wash with tap water for five minutes, changing the water every minute. Then you'll wash with Scott's solution for three minutes. You'll wash with tap water for three minutes. And then you'll dehydrate, but only in 35 and then 50% ethanol for three minutes each. Then you'll counter stain with the eosin again on a flat surface for two minutes. And then in the Copland jars, you'll go through the graded alcohol solutions to fully dehydrate. You'll go through 50, 70, 80, 96, and 100% ethanol five minutes each step. And then you'll mount in resin just like in the video I just showed you for the Alcyon Blue. As your laboratory assignment, you'll be conducting a results analysis and answering discussion questions and presenting these items to the class in a presentation. The first item that you'll address during your presentation is question number one, describe what you are seeing in the cartilage section and what components are stained. Do you see nonspecific staining? What type of cartilage is ear cartilage? Are these results consistent with other published histology results for cartilage? What else would you stain for in order to further characterize the structure of the cartilage? And the rubric for me to grade your response is shown below. Next, how are these histological techniques applicable to any experiment or research done in the field of tissue engineering of cartilage. Number three, give several examples of the latest approaches to cartilage tissue engineering and cell transplantation. Have any of these been applied clinically? Use citations for each example. What questions or issues remain so that tissue engineering can be used to mass produce cartilage? What qualities are needed in the ideal polymer scaffold for cartilage tissue engineering? 